Hello traders, welcome back to the top stocks to watch this week. My name is Logan Silver. If you're not familiar with who I am, I am a proprietary trader. I've worked as a risk manager for a proprietary trading firm in the past, and I am an options, crypto, and forex analyst at OBR Investing. My job is to help make sure that you are not one of the 90% of traders that are losing 90% of their money in the first 90 days. And that's why I'm here to go over the top stocks to watch in this upcoming week. So without any further delay, let us get right into this week's video. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with how we run this, but first we are going to go over our fundamental drivers for this upcoming week before we get into our technical analysis and earnings in the S&P 500. So this week, very, very low on fundamental drivers. As you can see, we just have news Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when Fed Chair Powell speaks. That is all for this upcoming week. And as you can see on screen right now is the earnings in the S&P 500 for this week. Awesome. So here we are going into our technical analysis and we're going to start off on SPY because that's where we start off on usually. So last week I was telling you that if we break below 441, that would be an area where we have to start reanalyzing where we're going and, you know, see if maybe we are due for some further downside. So I personally do think we are due for some further downside, and that is due to the fact that we are invalidating our bullish Elliott Wave counts, validating our bearish Elliott Wave counts, and also we are breaking back beneath the anchored VWAP from all-time high and maintaining some nice daily candle closes beneath that level. So I am under the impression that we are going to make a new low beneath 410, but if we do recover and we do bounce back, it will have to be within the next couple of days. It will have to be before we get below this area of 436.60. If we close beneath 436.60, then I will definitely be sold that we are going lower. Of course, we do have a chance to bounce. There is a chance that we form an inverse head and shoulders right here, should we bounce very strong on Monday, but I do not think that it is likely right now. That being said, it's obviously on the table. I would not discredit the bullish thesis just yet, but it definitely is not the most likely at this time. I would not say it is the most probable. The bearish wave count at this time does seem to be the most probable, which you will see does play into the analysis that we have on some of the other assets that we're going to look at this week. And that actually moves us right into Tesla. So Tesla has been bouncing back and forth uh, between the area of 977 just about and 1026 since the 11th of April. We are consolidating the same level we consolidated prior back in March 24th, 25th range. And now it does appear that we're making a push to the downside. So should we break below this level at 976 flat? I will be bearish on Tesla. That being said, we obviously can come and we can bounce higher and hold this consolidation range for a little bit more, perhaps actually break above. If we break above, then I'll be bullish. Very, very simple. If we break below, I'm bearish. If we break above, I'm bullish. That's how we should be treating these entry parameters, right? Because this is only valid if we break out to one direction. So don't jump in too fast on Tesla. See if we get a break out of this consolidation level and where it is. I am bearish on Dropbox in this upcoming week. Uh, Dropbox has been maintaining lower highs recently and maintaining a downtrend, I would say, for the last couple of days after a quick retracement here. But it does appear that we're going to resume this downtrend in the upcoming week, so I'm looking for DBX puts looking into the beginning of this next week. AMD has just been getting absolutely slaughtered with no mercy, so I am hoping that we see a bounce sometime in this week, but it does not seem like that may be the most likely thing. Um, there's not too many support levels to keep an eye on at this level. AMD is currently in a free fall, I would say, um, but you know, we have uh, just broken out of this head and shoulders on the higher time frames, which I know a lot of people are eyeing up on social media, but as you can see, we have our left shoulder, head, right shoulder right here. And now we broke beneath our neckline. Let's just quickly draw on our neckline. So, you know, this head and shoulders could take us down potentially to $86.93 or perhaps all the way down to $73. So there's definitely some downside in AMD's future. Not exactly sure where it's going to stop, but we have some ideas. I'm definitely keeping a bearish outlook on AMD. 
Boeing appears to be breaking a head and shoulders, lots of head and shoulders this week. Um, on the lower time frames, going into the close of this last week, as you can see, we are just on the neckline now. So we're gonna be keeping an eye on this Monday first thing. Um, I am bearish on Boeing. I think Boeing got a nice beat the last couple of days, but it has to catch up to the rest of the market and come down a little bit. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on Boeing. If we break from this level, be bearish. If we bounce, maybe look for a breakout of this high at 185.60. If we get above that, maybe consider looking bullish. And Apple is a very interesting chart. So I was actually able to catch a very nice move on Apple here. Sold the top. Didn't exactly know it was going to be the top, but you know, I'm definitely not complaining. Uh, we did have this on our last week's top stocks to watch. And now we are retesting this level, which does appear to be Apple's last stand at recovering. If we break back below this resistance turned into support level, then I will be bearish on Apple. But you know, going into Monday, at least, I will hope for a recovery just because we did seem to bounce off this level at the close of day on Thursday because we had Friday off. Um, keep an eye out on this level. If you break down farther, be bearish, just like on our other assets, right? Facebook in a very similar position. We uh, are now wedging pretty hard on app, uh, Facebook, rather. And I do think that we will break out to the upside because we usually break out to the upside of descending wedges. That being said, if we break out to the downside, that is very bearish. And we will most likely capitulate to the downside if we do break out to the downside. Um, regardless, this is again, completely dependent on if we break out to the upside or downside, but this is an actionable trade setup either way. So keep an eye out on this wedge. If we break out to the upside, I will definitely be looking for calls. NVIDIA just retesting some daily support. You know, we were looking at AMD and said AMD is some more downside. AMD has been getting hit harder than NVIDIA, so it would not surprise me to see those both maybe uh, diverge a little bit because we, we know that they usually have a positive correlation, but we have seen them move uh, independent of each other recently some days. Regardless, they will follow each other loosely, but we are back at support on NVIDIA, so I am bullish unless we break this level. We're on a lot of invalidation levels, so a lot of these ideas can change rather quickly. The price information in the next one to two weeks are going to be very important on SPY so we can have a clearer picture. If you go back and look at the last two months, we were very, very clear, and we were able to very clearly see where the market was going. It's getting a little bit more confusing now, but there's nothing we can do really for that. Just go unbiased, try to find trend, and try to ride that trend. Disney is going to be our top chart to watch for this week. We are on monthly lows, just like on NVIDIA, and consolidating like Tesla. So we are combining some patterns here. If we break out to the downside, very bearish. If we break out to the upside, very bullish. Keeping a very close eye on Disney, but this looks great. I really like this zone that we're in now. So we try to keep these videos rather short for you guys, but also keep an eye on Tilray Long and Target Long as well in this upcoming week, besides what we already went over. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope you learned something from this video and can take it into your next week of trading. If you did, please like and subscribe. We all greatly appreciate it at OBR. And as always, happy trading. I will see you in the next video.